Hey guys, Frugal Stu here. Today we will be talking about what's in my camera bag. If you are new to the channel, please hit the like and subscribe button. This is a video I have wanted to make for a really long time, and I enjoy and love looking at what other creators are using in their camera bags, so I hope you find this video relevant and helpful. Let's get started in this video by briefly talking about my camera bag. I'm currently using the Shimoto Action X50. First off, this is an expensive camera bag. It costs about $330 for the bag alone, and there's an additional cost for the camera core unit you pick out for this bag. I chose the medium mirrorless core unit, and so you'll get to see that later in this video, and this option adds about $70 in cost. As you can see, this camera bag is loaded with straps, side pockets, and all types of features for this bag. And the way I was able to justify the high cost of this bag is because I'm using it as a dual purpose bag. If I was to buy this bag for a camera bag only, I do believe it would be out of my budget, but because I'm using this bag also for hiking, I was able to justify this $400 price. Before we talk about my camera gear, I wanted to highlight a few features about this bag that I really enjoy. As you can see here, this bag has an adjustable harness system, which makes it a great bag for people with different heights. This bag is very comfortable for hiking and carrying heavy camera gear. This bag has a removable waist belt, which I currently have removed in this video, but it's a great feature if you're carrying a heavy bag. Lastly, before we open this bag, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite features on this bag, which are these front pockets that are on the straps. These pockets do not look aesthetically pleasing to me, but functionally, I love these pockets. I use them all the time for my cell phone or if I have other small items I need to put in the secondary pocket. And as you can see, they both have this blue lining here, which makes it easy to identify things inside the pockets. I can honestly say after using these for about a year, I really start to miss not having strap pockets on my other bags. So with all that said, let's open up this bag and look inside. As you can see, when you open this bag, you have access to all your camera gear in the core unit. And also this is where your laptop goes. This sleeve can fit up to a 15 inch laptop, but it is a tight fit, especially if you have a case on your laptop. Next in my bag, let's start out by what camera am I using? I'm currently using the Fuji XS10. This is a great hybrid photo and video camera. I've really enjoyed using this camera and believe it has a lot of features for the price point. I do not see a lot of reviews about this camera, but I think it is extremely underrated camera. Overall, I've had a positive experience switching to the Fujifilm system. Previously, I was shooting on a Canon system, but I have enjoyed the mirrorless APS-C system by Fuji. I have this camera set up with this lens for around $1,400. It's the 16 to 80 millimeter f4 kit lens. It has really good image quality, stabilization for a medium level lens. I only carry one lens and I carry this lens for video mainly is what I use it for. It's the Fujifilm 23 millimeter f2 lens. It's a small compact fixed lens and I really enjoy shooting with this lens. It has good low light and sharp image quality. It is great for portraits and it's about a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent on the XS10. It's around a $400 price point and is a great lens to add into your bag. So as you can see, I have a pretty small setup. I shoot all of my video and photography with just these two lenses. On occasion, I have rented some special lenses such as my Yellowstone video, which you may have seen, in that video, I rented a telephoto and an expensive wide angle lens, but you can really do a lot with just these two affordable lenses. This lens is around $400 and the second lens here is around $500. These are lower, more medium level lenses and some would even consider these budget lenses, but overall, I think the quality is still really good. With this camera and lens combo, I can shoot clean 4K, 1080, slow motion at 120 frames per second and 240. I can shoot night, street, landscape, both with video and photo, which covers all of my needs as a hobbyist. I will say, if you're primarily a video shooter, I would not recommend this camera because it is more difficult to customize the menu settings for video specifically. You can still shoot quality video, however the workflow is a lot slower on this camera, and I find myself sometimes missing shots in video because I have to change my settings so frequently. For photography, this camera has great image quality and shoots around 26 megapixel photos, and the Fujifilm colors are hard to beat. With the photography settings, it also has all of the customizable menu settings, so I find that it's really easy to work shooting photos. Overall, for the price point, you're really getting some pro-level features, but at a lower price than many of the competitors. And for hobbyists such as myself, it's a great compromise. The next item in my bag I want to talk about is my GoPro kit. 
So here is all of my GoPro accessories inside this small bag. I really like having everything in one kit, and I think it's the best way to travel with all of the GoPro accessories. I actually think one of the first videos on this channel was of this GoPro kit. And in fact, I still use the exact same kit. And as you can see here, it's just a GoPro Hero 7. This is just a great camera, and I don't see the need to update to the newer cameras yet, as the quality of this one still shoots 4K and 1080, and it's still very affordable. I have no problem using older equipment, and I've been using this for several years, and everything I need is contained in my GoPro kit. The next item I want to show you in my bag is this Loom Cube Panel Mini, and this has the diffuser on it. I usually take this with me everywhere. It's about the size of a credit card, and because it's so small, it's very easy to travel with, and I love having this in my bag at all times. Like the Panel Mini, an ND filter and polarizer is also always in my kit. These are some low budget filters that I bought off of Amazon, but they work great and get the job done. If you're into photography, I recommend having a polarizer for landscape shots such as water or sky pictures. I also recommend having a variable ND filter if you're traveling and shooting video at all different times of the day. It's great to always include both of these in your bags because you never know what kind of shots you may need. So next on my list is what drone am I using? So this is the DJI Mini 2. And before I bought this drone, I had the DJI Mavic Air, and I really enjoyed that drone, and it had great video quality. It's kind of odd upgrading to a drone that is essentially cheaper, and that is what the Mini 2 is, but the reason I upgraded is because the range is so much better. I always had issues with my Mavic Air having interference with that drone, but with this DJI Mini 2, it's radio instead of Wi-Fi, and it's just such a better experience. I never have issues with it. It flies well, and overall, I've just been so happy since I switched to using this drone. Here you can see that the controller as well as the batteries fits inside my camera cube. And last in my camera cube, I carry the Zoom H1N audio recorder as well as a lapel mic. I do not have a shotgun mic on my camera because I usually do voiceovers or recording easier audio that's more stationary. For now, I've been able to get away with just using an audio recorder and a lapel mic. But at some point in the future, I will upgrade to a shotgun mic. At this time, I haven't had the funds to purchase a shotgun mic, and all of my money has been spent toward the gear in this video, and so this is just what I have to use at this time. Before I move all of this gear on the table, I want to remove the core unit out of the bag to give you an idea of what it looks like. So here is the medium core unit, and what's great about this unit is it comes with these dividers. You can lay out the core unit however you like, and all of the gear shown in this video so far fits inside this core unit, and honestly, there's more space if I wanted to put more into it. What's great about the core unit is when I get to the hotel or my house, it has this cover on it, and I can pull out the core unit and zip it up to keep the dust out of this bag. So it's really easy to move this core unit in and out of the bag. As I mentioned earlier in this video, once you remove this core unit, you have this additional storage capacity. There's actually a zipper here for this pocket, so you get the full access of this bag and the roll top bag expanding gets you additional liter capacity, which is a great feature. This makes this bag perfect for hiking when you're not using your camera gear. Usually I do travel with a tripod and I'm currently using this Manfrotto tripod. I believe I've been using this tripod for around eight years. It has been like a long time. It's never broken, it's never failed me. I really enjoy this tripod because it's small, compact. It is aluminum and doesn't have anything special about it. It's an MKC H01. It has a small fluid head and a plate to mount on cameras, but it's perfect for lighter APS-C cameras. And at the end of the day, this tripod just works well and I've never had any issues. Now let's look at the other compartment in this bag. So to access this bag, you have a roll top here and it does take some adjustment to get used to a roll top bag if you've never used one. But after using one for some time, I really enjoy having this feature and the blue lining in this bag makes it easy to find all of your gear. I currently travel with these Sony MX3 headphones and then I carry all of my small accessories in this Topo Design accessory bag. It carries items like charging cables, drone ND filters, batteries, because I don't like small accessories to be moving around loose in my bag. And lastly, inside my bag, I carry a small tabletop tripod that is similar to a Gorillapod. This tripod is great for unique shots, and I'm not a fan of the Gorilla tripods. This is an alternative Amazon cheaper one that's around $20. It's called a Shimbo tripod, and it works well. It has everything I need, and I'm using a small mirrorless camera, so it's not an issue with the weight of my setup. I also carry this in case I need some unique shots or in case I'd like to record some GoPro time-lapse. 
In conclusion, I hope all of the gear in this video helps you decide what's in your camera bag and can help you get unique shots like this around the world. If you have any thoughts or comments, please leave them down below. I hope to continue to bring relevant content for the frugal minded buyer and be a good steward of finances. Thanks for watching.